Hello again, in this series we're looking at making a warrior character. In this episode we're looking at marking seams so that we can bake out and texture. This is an overview of marking seams with a few handy tips and I'll be time lapsing a fair bit so you can see how I unwrap the whole character. So I've got my retopo here and what I want to do is cut it into areas where the texturing will be that bit simpler, trying to get minimal stretching of course the quick way to do this is to go into edit mode, select all, U to unwrap and smart UV project. And I am painting on the model so I could get away with that, but I want to be slightly more efficient because it can be easier to paint when you've got good seams around the place. Also you won't have problems where you have bleeding between the lines of the seams. That's when one bit of your texture map overlaps the other and it happens sometimes in game engines and it's unavoidable. So you want to hide your seams wherever possible. So a smart UV project is a bit of a lazy way, a quick way, but it's not a particularly good way. So what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to mark areas where there's obvious creases and differences in shapes. So one obvious one would be around the inside of the helmet and the arm piece, the straps, the arm probably down here in this sort of area, and I can separate these out fairly easily. So let's start with the headpiece, this sort of feathery bit at the top. I'm going to select this edge around here, so Alt click, select that and it's gone all the way around control E and then mark seams and you can see it's worked when it's turned orange the helmet I would say would be a good place around here so I'm just alt clicking and I just noticed a problem with my topology so I'll just quickly sort that out by going to my high poly mesh just seeing where it should be so about there get my knife tool out and cut between there bring back my high poly. I've still got snapping turned on, so I can bring that into here without too much problems. And dissolve those edges like that. I'll have to do the same for the other side because I've applied my mirror already. So I've just gotta watch out for those sort of glitches. And there's another one here. I must have done something where I'd removed some doubles and just gone a bit too far. So hopefully that hasn't happened too often around the place. This one's a fairly quick one to fix, but it is a pain. Now I've not applied my shrink wrap either. So it is still snapping in the right places. I will apply that eventually, but I can do that right at the end. So again, selecting the vertices with alt click and then control E mark seams. So throughout this process, I'm looking for obvious areas where there's a definite difference in the material. So next to the leather straps and around the shoulder plates. That's where the materials will be very different in color and texture. So a visible seam won't really be a problem. Occasion Most of the time I'm using alt click to select a loop. If there's any bit of the loop that I don't want, I use the circle select and unselect that part. Now your arms will need a seam because obviously they're a cylinder, so you can cut them off perhaps at the wrist or somewhere like that, but a good area for a seam would be down the back. Unless this is your main character and it's kind of a third person, then down the front would obviously be better. But in this case, I'm thinking down the back because we're more likely to see him from this sort of angle, I'm thinking. You don't have to be perfect in this process. Generally marking seams out yourself rather than UV unwrap will always be a bit better. And as you gain experience and get better at it, the more efficient your UV maps will be. But particularly when you're painting your model, it doesn't matter too much. If you're grabbing textures from the internet or wherever else, then your seams are gonna be very important because where the textures hit each other will be very obvious. Okay, so we can see how we're getting on by bringing out our UV editor. 
Let's clear these menus. And I'm going to make sure I'm in Blender Render. It's just a bit quicker and easier. I'm going to create a new material. And it's just going to be a test. And I want to have a UV grid. 1024 by 1024 is fine. It doesn't need an alpha or anything like that. Let's go OK there. There's our UV grid. And just create a new material and make sure the UV grid is on there. So just click New. And come down to the image and choose your UV grid. And then to see this grid on our character, we need to unwrap. Select all, in edit mode of course, and unwrap. And we can see there's a few things for us to sort out. And let's just bring up the UV grid and we can see what everything's looking like on our character as well. Now I make a tiny mistake here. I don't put the shading to shadeless. So I'm always swapping between texture and solid mode to see what I'm doing. You don't need to do that. Press N to get the tool panel. And where it says shading, change that to shadeless. Okay, it's not too bad by the looks of things. There's issues here and that looks like the face. So I need to sort of uncurl these bits to make it easier, it's sort of squished in there. But other places look okay, really. We can also look on the model and think where the cubes are bigger and smaller. The smaller cubes are around here. We don't need as much detail, but the smaller cubes will obviously have more detail. So we can take that shape there and scale it down in our image editor. And we've got bigger cubes around the helmet, so we want to scale that up, as it were. And certainly in this sort of trunks area, they are huge. So a few things to sort out there. I've got some options down the side here, which might help you. There's things like uh, stretch, so you can see the sort of stretch that's going on. The area stretch gives you a better idea of what's going on. If it's blue, you're okay. The closer it gets to yellow, the more stretching there is. So let's see what this bit is here. If we come down here, that will keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. So that means when I select something from here, it will come up over here. So if I circle select a few of these, yep, it's the trunks that are being a problem. And it's not unwrapping them very well. So I've obviously missed a seam out here. So it hasn't separated the belt and the trunks. And it's trying to do them all as one object and here as well. So it's coming into this area here. So it's all a big mess here. And you can see that with areas that are squashed in like that. And these green areas I'm going to have to have a look at. So I go around selecting those green areas, seeing where they are and seeing if I need to mark some more seams. The fewer seams the better, but don't be afraid to put seams in, especially down areas like this where there will be a marked difference between the two textures. Another problem is the belt. It's being splayed out like this. It needs a cut in the circle. So any cylinder needs a cut through it so it opens out. I might separate these down here as well. So let's try that again, unwrap, and that looks better. So the other areas, circle select this area, so it's the hand, and I thought that was going to be an issue, so I'm going to have to have more seams in that. So I'm just going around marking new seams where I think they need to be stretched out, and each time just re-unwrapping. Now you might be tempted to try and keep a mirror on your object and unwrap if both sides are completely symmetrical. But that's actually quite a pain because, because if you try and draw any highlights in, they appear on both sides. Also, if there's any slight difference in your mesh, you really notice it with the mirror. The other problem you get is right down the middle, it becomes really obvious that there's a seam and a mirror. So apply your mirror, unless you really are in a rush and you think it's fine to have a purely symmetrical texture across your model. So you can see with this time lapse here I'm just mapping out big areas and where there's obvious seams. It's kind of trial and error at times. You can always re-unwrap without any problems. Okay, so that's not too bad. It's a fairly quick job. Some people do exceptional work with this and they map it all out really well. But I'm reasonably happy with how this is looking. I just need to scale a few areas and try and pack this in a bit better. So with this turned off, otherwise you can't select link selection, I can go L over one of these areas and choose seam and it will only choose that area. And I can scale it up or down. And I'm scaling up 
just a touch so that it coincides with the other areas and all the squares are equal. That way the same amount of detail will be on each area. And you can select multiple areas just by clicking L on the different areas. And you should see scaling it up will make the boxes smaller and that's way too big obviously. But about there should be fine. And it would be a good idea to cut this up as well with a seam. You can just select some areas and unwrap those on their own, but you do have to realize you have to scale them back in to the right size, just somewhere around there. Okay, so that's fairly passable. It's not something I'm especially great at, I wouldn't say, UV unwrapping. It's never been a huge problem because I hand paint a lot of my textures. And when you're hand painting, it doesn't make as much of a difference. But you do want to keep the seams down because of any bleeding problems. All the time I've forgotten that I should just t turn the shadeless off, I, will <laughs> I keep going across to the solid mode. There's absolutely no point, you can leave it on material and have it in shadeless. Me just being a bit silly. If you have this button selected, it's got all the vertices selected, so the bits that they join where the seams are. So if I scale in now, it's going to stretch those areas as well. When you turn this off, you can scale them in. I've also got snapping turned on, I think, which is making it snap all over the place. Once you've scaled them and you think you've got the right detail for each area, you're ready to pack your areas. So let's go full screen with this and start moving them into position. If I press Control P now, which is pack islands, it will, it will undo all the work that I've scaled. So I don't want to do that. So if we go to island selection, that'll be a bit easier. So I'm just slowly moving all these islands into place. You don't have to be really precise. It is nice if you can utilize all the space, but it doesn't matter too much. We're just trying to be as efficient as possible and get the most out of our textures. Now it's good to go over your object and make sure there's no overlapping UVs like this. There's obviously some sort of problem here, so I may have to re-unwrap this one. And there's a few areas like this. There's something I don't often get, but it's happened this time for some reason, so I'll look into that. So I'll go back to link selection and find out where that is, and I've missed a seam. So I'll just mark those seams, unwrap it, scale it to the right size again. And now I can move all my islands into position, and just check whether there's any overlapping seams. So there we are, an unwrapped and ready for baking warrior. In the next episode, we'll be baking out the textures.